You are welcome to this brief introduction to Hebrews chapter 11, lesson 13 in the Epistle to the Hebrews. Most of the material that we shall talk about can be downloaded from our website at hebrews.cura.download. Let's get into it. This famous chapter cites more than 30 examples from the Holy Torah of ancient Israelites exercising faith towards God, illustrating how that faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it the people of old received their commendation. By faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. This text was written in epistolary Greek of the first century CE and has been well preserved across 19 centuries. Nevertheless, ancient copyists introduced a few variant readings. In verse 11, some who were attempting to make the text clearer wrote, Abraham with Sarah was able to beget, instead of Sarah, though sterile, was able to conceive. In the following verse, a few ancient manuscripts read, Descendants came, instead of Descendants were born, a difference of one consonant. And in the following verse 13, a few ancient manuscripts read, having been rewarded instead of having received. A few key vocabulary items from the first three verses include the term assurance in English, hypostasis in Greek. Hypostasis has widely different meanings, the first of which is the essential or basic structure or nature of an entity, its substantial nature, essence, actual being, and reality. That is, its underlying structure, often in contrast with that which merely seems to be. Amongst the meanings that can be authenticated for Hebrews 11.1, a strong claim can be made for realization. We shall have more to say on that shortly. And then the term conviction of things not seen. Conviction in Greek, elenchos, is primarily the act of presenting evidence for the truth of something, that is, proof or proving. It is not a strong feeling. And then in verse 2, commend, from the verb martyreo, to confirm or attest something on the basis of personal knowledge, that is, to offer testimony. It was God who was offering his testimony to the authenticity of the faith of Bible characters. And in verse 3, the term understand, means to grasp or comprehend something on the basis of careful thought, that is, to perceive, apprehend, understand, or gain insight. It is not a, a passive repetition of somebody else's doctrine. In English, verse 1 reads, Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. However, this is meaningless. The first clause, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, sounds as though faith were self-deceit or mere wishful thinking. And the second clause, the conviction of things not seen, sounds as though faith were having strong feelings about one's imagination. The terms assurance and conviction, however, are abstract nouns, that is, shortcut speech for native speakers. 
abstract nouns in their deep structure usually imply an actor, a verb or action, an object, and an outcome. Let's see how this works. Hypostasis is used in Hebrews 1.3 of God's true nature revealed in the historical person of Jesus Christ. Thus the term hypostasis implies essential reality that becomes visible in some way. In that sense, we can translate 11.1a as faith, the actor, causes its verb, hope, its object, to become reality, its outcome. Similarly, elenchos means convincing proof, proof that leads to conviction of a criminal, not my strongly held convictions about my non-provable guesses. Thus, we can translate 111b as faith, the actor, looks for, the verb, invisible realities, the object, to be proven as an outcome. In other words, Hebrew 1 means loyal believers wait patiently until their hopes become reality, expecting proof that God will reward their faith. So, as you read through chapter 11, see the ways in which loyal believers saw their hopes realized or how God approved of their faith during their lifetime or afterwards. New Testament books consist of thoughtful discourse. They are neither collections of ramblings nor of disconnected aphorisms. Thus, it is important to discover the structure or outline of each book. Dr. Westfield's discourse analysis suggests that we are now in the third section of the book of Hebrews, first subsection dealing with faith as it was modeled by action events in the lives of people from the past. The argument or logic of the current chapter is rather straightforward. It is an expansion on the theme of faith. Faith brings hope to reality and proof of invisible realities. By way of explanation, it underscores our basic presupposition that the Word of God created the ages or the world from invisible matter, then offers a number of examples from the antediluvian saints and how they received God's commendation as our proof that he approved of their faith. In verse 6, we have a further explanation that faith assumes God to exist and waits on God to prove what he has promised. Verse 7, we have deluvian saints who saw the world judged whilst being safe in response to their faith. And from verse 8, the post deluvian world, during which saints obeyed God in hope of receiving his promises. As a summary statement in verse 13 through 16, we're told that with faith, these died without receiving the promises that God had prepared for them. Hmm, we shall come back to that. And then more examples of faith. Abraham, who lived in tents in a land that his descendants would inherit. Moses and the Israelites, who sought and fought for a promised land. And some elders who won victories whilst others were mistreated. And as an application of the chapter for us today, and God commended all of these, but they did not receive the promises that God has commended to us, making both them and us perfect.
We shall have more to say about that as well. The examples of faith cited in this chapter for its original readers were especially appropriate for Jewish Christians retained their faith in God, their love for Torah, and their admiration for their patriarchs, their prophets, and their heroes. Even though they no longer depend upon animal sacrifices, human priests, feasts, or pilgrimages Yet they trust their scriptures to be reliable and a trustworthy source of truth, their guide for leading a godly life. Thus, the epistle to the Hebrews draws examples from the first covenant, also called the Old Testament, to demonstrate how loyalty to Jesus will cause their hope to become reality and their beliefs to be proven true. If you lead Bible study groups, or train others to do so, provide a number of discussion topics that will help adult learners draw out of the text that which God wants them to learn. For example, in verses 1 through 3, you might ask, in what way can we get God to make our hope a reality? Or, how can we find proof of invisible realities? How do verses 2 and 3 help to explain verse 1? In verses 4 through 5a, in verses 4 through 5a, in what way did God likely show his acceptance of Abel's offering? Help them recall what happened to Elijah's offering compared with that of the priests of Baal. And just how does Abel speak today? Verses 5 and 6, In what way was Enoch's departure a proof of invisible realities? And verses 5 through 7, In what ways is biblical faith similar to the classical scientific method? And how did Noah put God's word to a scientific test? In verses 8 through 12, discuss in what ways Abraham's lifestyle demonstrated biblical faith, and in what way did Abraham's hope become a reality. In verses 13 through 16, how soon must we see our hope realized to prove that we have true faith? Or, in what way did the ancient ones show their faith? And what did they decline to do? Verses 17 through 22 beg the question, In what way did Abraham see his faith realized when everything seemed lost? What did the patriarchs do by faith awaiting future proof of unseen realities? Verses 23 through 28 how did Moses regard his rustic lifestyle and face up to angry kings? And what does the phrase, the reproach of Christ, mean? In Greek, the term Christos means the anointed and probably describes the people of God, since verses 25 and 26 form a single sentence in the original and verses 29 through 31, how did God show proof of invisible realities to those who obeyed him by faith? In 32 through 38, how did ancient believers live out their faith when God did nothing to rescue them? And finally, in verses 39 through 40, what was it that none of the ancient believers received that we have now received? As you preach, teach, and train younger and older Christians alike, underscore from this passage a number of ancient Christian doctrines. From verse 1, how faith waits for hope to become reality. In verse 3, our basic presupposition of supernatural creation of the world. Verse 6, how that God eventually rewards those who seek him. Verse 7, the story of Noah, his barge, and the great flood. And in verse 27, 
the history of Moses, the Passover, the Exodus, and the crossing of the Reed Sea. Finally, your assignment for this week includes homework. Read through Hebrews 11, 1 through 40, once a day this week from different translations. As you do so, please jot down notes and queries that you want to discuss in your Bible study group. As a project, let me recommend that you turn a sheet of paper or a word processor screen sidewise and form it into eight columns. These will include Bible reference, a person's name, their act of faith, under what circumstance, the thing they hoped for, and its realization, or the invisible thing they dealt with, and the eventual proof. Now there is a faith act described in every verse between verses 3 and 31. Fill in the columns with a word or two. Of course, not every column will have something in every case. If you please, prepare a one-page summary of your project and share it with your Bible study group. As you read, study, and teach this text, resolving to grow in faith, you will see God realize your hopes, and he will provide proof of his invisible reality.